Hey ladies, hello ladies, hello ladies, welcome to day one of the spiritual detox. <laughs> I gave you that name just a few days ago, it just dropped in my spirit, I'm like, okay, pretty much, beautiful. Alright, I'm going to share this in the group, as you all know the drip. Um, let's share this into the group so that more ladies can get to join us on this amazing ride. Right? I hope you all are excited, because I am. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Right? I'm just trying to find the video. Every time. Um, just give me a second. You all know it always takes me a little bit of time to find this video. God is helping me in this social. And I'm actually married to a man who's a tech guy, right? I always try and I'm always reluctant sharing that every time. Because this technology thing is not done. Um, Please ignore the, the music in the background. I was unable to reduce it. So I'm sorry about that. All right, it's been shared into the group. I'm expecting all the ladies to start flooding in as usual and I'm excited about that. Okay, okay, okay. Let me pin it, pin it, pin it, pin it. How are you ladies doing today? Are you excited about today? How has your fast been? Have you been tempted to eat? Have you been tempted to break your fast? Have you been tempted to get angry? Have you been tempted by someone? Oh, let me know how it went. Fastings are always um, an interesting time. All right, let me start shouting people out. I see some new faces. Hello. Oh Lord. Okay, so before I start pronouncing the names, um, the, the anointing for name pronunciation has not fallen upon me yet, so please pardon me if I do not pronounce your name right. Um, hello Mo, hello Sherry, Sherry Lynn, hello DC, hello Ruth, hey Shay Shay, hello Loretta, hello Kimberly, hello Jovita, hello Juni. Hello, Liz. Hello, Luthen. So in my spirit, I am convinced that I just destroyed some names, but I plead the fifth. <laughs> All right, welcome, ladies. I'm excited to have you here, as you can see. I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Tempted to get angry. Shay, Shay, listen. It comes, it comes with the territory. I always tell people, right? The higher the temptation during the fast, the more you know that God wants you to do that fast. Listen, you will get so irritated. People would suddenly or randomly just do things to get on your nerves because this is it. The enemy wants you to do something that he would hold against you to withhold the answers to your prayers. But you're going to have to fight it through. You got two more days. You're going to have to fight it through. Oh Lord, what, did that, what just happened? You're going to have to fight it through. <laughs> the devil is a liar. I'm going to wear those earrings back, right? And don't allow the enemy to take away your blessing, all right? Every time anybody does anything, listen, sometimes it's going to be your own people. <laughs> it doesn't even have to be a stranger, but you're just going to say, you know what? I love you with all the love in my heart, but my destiny calls for me to go through this process. So I'm going to give you love instead of what I would love to give you, which is the holy hands. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So you, you can do this. You will get through this. Amen. All right, ladies. For those of you. For those of you. Um, all right. Yeah, I was just about to do that. You're in the spirit mode. For those of you who are just joining in. My name is Anne. Many people call me Lady Anne, which is nice. I love it. My husband was the one who gave me that name, so I love to bear it. Um, we're going through a three days fast. In this fast, we're going to be breaking demonic patterns. What are patterns? Patterns are things that have repeated themselves at least twice in your family. We want to break them. So you can call them cycles, you can call them bondage, whatever it is you want to call them, they're not good, right? Anything that is negative that has happened in your family more than once is a pattern. So tonight, we're going to be breaking those patterns. Tomorrow, we're going to be breaking something else. We're going to be doing a lot of breaking so that by Friday, <laughs> some of you are going to be walking so free 
you're going to be having dreams um, um, during this process. God is going to be revealing to you the, the evidence of the prayers that you're praying. All right. So today it's patterns, cycles, things that have existed in your family before now. Now I gave you all an, an assignment on the group. I said, write down the things that um, have repeated themselves more than once in your family. The reason why you need to write them is because you need to see it. Many times we do not even know that it's a pattern. We think it's normal that um, in our family we easily get angry. And we just, we just like, we're so temperamental in our family. We're so passionate in our family. It has to do with the culture, you know. It has to do with the people. No, no, no. It's a pattern, right? Because if, if, if you come from a family where more than one or two people have, don't have the ability to control their anger, it's a bomb waiting to explode. And it's a pattern that must be broken. And it doesn't take, um, it doesn't take years for you to break patterns. It just takes one person. To rise up in that family and say, well, this is it. This is the end of it. And that's why I'm excited. I'm excited to break. So when I pray, I get really passionate. I get really emotional. I speak in tongues. I cast out demons. <laughs> right? So if that's new to you and you don't know how to feel about that, I pray that the Holy Spirit is going to do a conviction work in your heart. So that you understand that speaking in tongues is a gift of the Spirit. That has been given to believers because it's the only language that the enemy doesn't understand. So when I speak in tongues, he doesn't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> he doesn't know what I'm saying. He's lost. He's like, oh, whoa, 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 what is she saying? So I do it. I take advantage of it. So there's going to be lots of speaking in tongues. There's going to be lots of casting out of demons. I am going to be prophesying. It's a gift. Another gift of the spirit that has been given to believers to see the things that are about to happen because what is the difference between us and unbelievers if we do not know when things are going to happen or what things are going to happen so i prophesy i speak in tongues i cast out demons i pray really fervently because i believe that passionate prayers from the bottom of my heart even the heavens are able to stamp it that i mean i mean business so when, I'm, when, I, when I pray, even in my own private um, room, my husband knows that whenever we're having devotion, literally sometimes we have our neighbors knock on the door because I, but I'm like, listen, these earrings are not going to distract me today. All right. Um, I have neighbors sometimes knocking on the door, but I'm like, listen, we all pay rent in this house. <laughs> when you all are playing your disco song, I need to listen to it. So you're going to have to listen to this righteous words coming from the throne of grace. So when I, when, I, when I pray, even in my private room, I get mostly, the, 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 the more passionate I am, the more I know that it is something that the Holy Spirit is pressing upon my heart to keep pressing and traveling in the place of prayer. So that you're going to be seeing a lot of that today. I'm not just going to be talking for you to listen. I want you to also speak, right? Because listen, <laughs> those patterns in your family, they recognize your voice and they need you to speak. It's cool that I'm going to be prophesying and all of those things, but you need to open your mouth and say no more. Okay? So be bold. Open your mouth no more. I also want you to have a bottle of anointing oil next to you. The Bible says that the anointing breaks the yoke. It crushes it. It makes it non-existent. It puts it into... It kills it. <laughs> So you're going to need the anointing all to hear the prayers that you're praying. Now, many of you have so many questions. I can't answer every question, by the way, but I'm going to answer it here. It's just oil. It doesn't matter what it is, what kind of oil it is. If it's the oil you're using frying in your house, it doesn't matter. Just a little portion of oil. Put it next to you. Let it be where you are praying. Let it be where you... For those of you who have the gifts of speaking in tongues, speak in tongues right next to it because you're going to pour that oil. I don't want you to anoint yourself. I want you to pour it. Alright, it's good. I mean, you can put a little, if, you, if you're a little bit bougie, you can just do it like this and just rub it on your forehead. But what I do, I literally just, <laughs> I go, I'm that, um, yeah, I go that far because it's, it's serious. It's, it's life and death, right? Okay, so before we dive into today's prayer, I want to speak um, just for two minutes about the current issues that is happening all around the world. So wherever it is you're tuning in, I'm sure you've heard it. There's a problem called COVID-19. It's going around the, the world and people are living in fear, people are scared, you know, um, and all of those things. And um, I want you to know something. Listen, we walk not by fear, but by faith, right? 
So I'm suggesting, I'm advising, please take precautionary um, um, efforts, wash your hands, avoid minimal um, contact, body contact with people. Above all, it was not disinfection, disinfectant that um, took away the spirit of death from the Israelites. Guess what did it? The blood of Jesus. Ha! Listen. Put the blood of Jesus speak it to the doorpost of your home speak it upon your children for those of you who are married speak it upon your husband speak it upon yourself that's what the enemy sees and he leaves the enemy doesn't see um disinfectant and he leaves the enemy doesn't see nothing it, it, it doesn't respect nothing except the blood do you know that if an egyptian during the 10th plague in the Bible, for those of you who don't know what the 10th plague is, you can go back to the book of Exodus. The 10th plague in the Bible, if an Egyptian, a first son Egyptian, had gone into the house of an Israelite where the blood was on their doorpost, that Egyptian would not have died. Do you know that? Because the angel, the instruction was they would not kill when they see the blood. So it doesn't matter who is behind the door. If it's an Egyptian behind the door, an American behind the door, I don't care whoever is behind the door. If they don't see the blood, they kill. If they see the blood, they pass over. So I want you to, by faith, anoint your doorposts, anoint your children, anoint yourself, because that's the only thing the enemy recognizes. This issue is a demonic attack. And we Christians must fight it using the blood, the word of our testimonies don't 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 take anything lightly it's the advantage that we have as christians take advantage of it speak like soldiers of christ because that's what you have amen with that said let's go into today's prayer because we're going to be doing lots of prayer and i don't want us to do too much um outside talking now um many of you might have asked me you know why do we have to break patterns? I don't understand. Um, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Everything has become new. And I love the fact that um, you cannot hear me. You really cannot hear me? Um, is any other person having that problem? Can you all hear me clearly, please? Please, 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 please. If you can, please let me know. Yes, I can hear you. No, I can't hear you. Let me quickly find a solution. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, the issue of patterns, and I, I get messages saying, you know what, um, Lady Anne, what if I, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus? All things have passed away. So maybe that, that doesn't apply to me anymore. Um, that's cute, and I agree with you. You are a new creation. All things have passed away. All things um, have become new. But let me tell you something. Listen. Your spirit has received the presence of Christ. But the patterns in your family, they don't know if you're a Christian or not. You have to, there are things you have to open your mouth and declare. It, it's not like once you become a Christian, you give your life to Christ, all of a sudden all the demons in your family are like, oh my gosh, it's untouchable. No, there are still patterns that need to be broken. You need to reintroduce yourself to your family. You need to reintroduce yourself to your to the, to the, to the oracles and the, 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 the altars that have been created and built in your family by virtue of sin and conscious or unconscious effort from your parents, your grandparents. However it is, it may be. It applies to blacks, whites, Mexicans. I don't care where you come from. The, the, the altar, the, the patterns of the, the culture of creating an altar or having a stronghold in a family has no respecter of race, gender, age, educational background. You can be the most educated person. If in your family marriages do not last, your marriage will not last. You can be the most educa educated person. If in your family people do not make a certain income range, you will not make that money. You would have... You would have your bachelor's degree, you would have your PhD, you would have anything higher than a PhD and yet you'll be sitting home earning less than the income range in your family because that is the pattern that is existent in your family. So if you give your life to Christ, that's going to be cool with your intellect, with your intelligence, but if you do not open your mouth and denounce this pattern, break them using the technologies I'm going to be teaching, to, teaching you tonight, those patterns exist and guess what they don't stop with you so you're gonna have kids and those kids are gonna unconsciously begin to live a pattern that they are not even aware of 
right? So you see children, they know nothing, but because in the family, every daughter, every first daughter has always been sexually abused. So you see your daughter falling into that kind of pattern and you don't know where it's coming from. No, open your eyes. It's a pattern. Deborah said, until I, Deborah, arose, you have to arise as the Deborah of your family and stand in the gap and say no more. No matter how trivial that pattern is, it doesn't reflect the presence of Christ. It has to go. It has to go because here is the, there's an interesting fact about um, patterns. If the first, the beginner of the pattern, if for example, it was just anger, the next generation is not going to be anger. It's going to be an exponential increase of anger. So you see, in the next generation, it's going to be someone who had uncontrolled anger and abused somebody else. And then the generation afterwards, it's going to be uncontrolled anger led to the murder of another person. Sin improves. Right? So although it started with, oh, my daddy is just always angry. The son does not just stay with just, just always angry. Listen, Abraham was just a concubine. De, um, Jacob was two wives and two concubines. Same patterns improve. They escalate. The farther they go in the generation, the worse it gets. Till somebody stands up and breaks that thing. And that person has to be you tonight. You've been graced for it. You've been anointed for it. That is why you are the one who knows this, who has the knowledge, who has the light of God in you, right? And this is the thing. You're not fighting from a place of, oof, this is going to be good. You're not fighting from a place of defeat. You're fighting from a place of victory. So your prayers is not what's going to bring out the swords and then, no. You're fighting because you understand that the keys of death has been taken away from Satan. You're fighting from a place of understanding that this battle has been won. It's been established. You are re-establishing a spiritual reality. It's in the spirit realm you've won. In the physical realm, it doesn't look like it. So you need to bring down spiritual realities into the physical realm through a process called priesthood. As Christians, we are called two things. We are called, we are called three. We are called ambassadors. We are called kings. We are called priests. Three offices. Three different things. Not the same thing. A king. When me stepping into the position of a king is no longer me as a priest. When I step into the position of a king, it's me saying where the word of a king is, there is power. So I'm speaking the mind of God, knowing that it is established because where the word of the king is, there is power. When it comes to priesthood, when I stand in as a priest, it means I am re-establishing a spirituality to the physical realm. Maybe I look at my life and I see delay. I look at my pattern and I say, okay, this is not the time to look cute or to wear heels. I got to stand up and stand in as a priest. Then as ambassadors, we have been anointed to spread the gospel of Christ from nation to nation. So you have not become a Christian just for your own sake. You become a Christian to the empowerment and the enlightenment of another person. That's the whole idea of glorification. I talked about this during the five-day challenge. When I say glorification, I mean in the, in the kingdom of God, you do not glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. No. You are glorified by your ability to impact another person with what you've been glorified with by God so that that person that you impacted with that gift of yours looks back and thanks you. That's the, that's the pattern of glorification, right? So all of that is just extra bonus. The, the, the position I need you to step into tonight is the position of king and priest. I want you to listen to that. Pay attention very, very, very attentive. Don't be distracted. Some of you are going to be distracted. Listen to me. You're going to receive calls. People are going to text, send you text messages. Choose your deliverance. Okay? You're going to choose those, those two positions are what you're going to step into today. Right. So what does it mean? Why, how do patterns exist? Um, many of you might know one of the names of the devil is accuser. Literally, it's his full-time job. That's all he does two for seven. He roams to and fro trying to accuse the brethren in the presence of God. Here is the thing. Why does he have to do that? Why does he feel the need to do that? God is a God of principles. The kingdom is ruled by principles. That's why when you apply certain principles, you, you, are, you are bound to get certain results because the whole earth, the heavens, 
was created with principles. Principles govern the kingdom of heaven and earth. Okay. Now, because God is a God of principles, it means he's also a God of judgment. Which means when there is sin, judgment must occur. The only thing that stops judgment is blood. So before Jesus Christ died physically, because by the way, for those of you who don't know, before the foundation of the earth, a lamb was slain. So the establishment of the death and the resurrection of Jesus was done even before the earth was, was founded. Okay? Now, blood was introduced. The concept of blood, the blood, I'm not just talking about the blood of Jesus. The concept of the blood was a necessity because God is a God of judgment. It's a principle. The one that sinneth shall die. It's biblical. In order to make sure that people are not just committing once in dying, committing once in the concept of blood was introduced because blood is life. So, blood is introduced as a substitutionary work in exchange for what would have happened to you for the sake of that sin. So, somebody commits murder, the repercussion of that is probably murder, or that person dies. Then the person pleads the blood. In those days, in the days in the old test in the old testament before Christ, an animal would be slit, blood just had to be shed. Okay? Then Christ came. After John was the last prophet, Christ came and died. And his blood became the only blood that was recognized for the substitutionary work of the saints. Which means the, a saint, a believer, sins, but then repent humbly, genuinely, not with pride. You don't go to God saying, well, it, I'm, I'm only human, I'm only flesh. No, listen, God doesn't listen to what your mouth says, he listens to what your heart says. If your heart does not collaborate with your mouth, it picks what your heart says, leaves what your mouth says. That's, that's pretty much, he's not man that you can deceive. He listens to your heart more than he listens to your mouth, which is why I'm going to drop this one for you, which is why many times you keep attracting a certain kind of man, because although your mouth is saying, I want a godly man, your heart is saying, I want a man who's on the streets, whose trousers are on his kneecap, who's doing drugs, making so much money without no identification of a real job. And God is saying, well, that's what your heart is desiring. Hence why your heart is attracting that. That's just another bonus for somebody there. But the moment a believer opens their mouth and they say, I have sinned, I ask for mercy, I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood is the mercy code, is the access to mercy. Once it is, once it is, once it is mentioned and announced, that sin is nullified. The sheet of paper written with that sin is torn away. It is forgotten. It's a done deal. God doesn't go back to that book and remind himself, no, it's done. Now, because the enemy is constantly roaming around to call forth and remind God of certain sins, the reason why he's doing that is, God, look at your daughter. She just had sex before marriage. And because she sinned and she hasn't repented, I have now been given access because sin is the exposure of your spiritual life. What sin does is it exposes you to be vulnerable to attack. Sin exposes you for the enemy. When you sin, it's you're exalting your flesh above your spirit. And when flesh is exalted above your spirit, your flesh has no ability to protect you against spiritual attack. Only the spirit, only a charged up spirit has the ability to protect you against attack. Listen, the Holy Spirit is speaking right now and I need you to pay attention. If you're taking notes, take notes, okay? So, your flesh is exalted when you sin. And that makes you vulnerable to attack. Because the flesh has no capacity to protect you for battle. And because you become vulnerable, the enemy says to God, I can attack her. She's open for attack. And the only thing that can speak on your behalf in that moment is when the blood has been activated by you. All right. So the existence of patterns in your family started with, it always starts with somebody. By one person, whether your dad, your grandfather, your mom, your grandmother, whoever it is, committed a sin without activating the blood. 
and open themselves up for attack. The judgment and the principle of the kingdom then says that the sin of this man, the punishment of this man will go on to the third and even to the fourth generation. It's biblical, by the way. The punishment of that sin, which means for the sake of this man being a sexual abuser, for the sake of this man being an alcoholic, for the sake of this man being a thief, being a murderer, the repercussions of his sin flows even to the third and to the fourth generation. That is his grand children and great grandchildren sometimes it even extends for the uh, father right it extends the father um the father it, it extends father when even the next generation just keeps sinning without activating the blood but that's another concept now the enemy says this man has committed certain sin right he hasn't activated the blood he's accessible to me so that means the next generation and the next generation and the next generation must be punished for his decision making because the blood has not been introduced um because the blood has not been introduced the person becomes accessible now when the consequences fall to the third and the fourth generation um it's also consequences are also the repetition of a matter which means your mom for example was a single mom or she refused to maybe get married uh, she just wanted to live her life or she was committing abortions or just se several things the consequences are children begin to conform to a certain pattern that they are not even aware that it's it is hereditary so you see a child begin to become something that even you as a mother you've never told your child that this is how you were as a child you never told your child that look when i was a child i was very rebellious this is how what well, this is what i wanted to this is how i used to behave as a teenager you never had that conversation but because in the spirit realm there is a legal ground that is an operation that legal ground is the access that has been given to the enemy based off sin the child begins to conform without knowing it consciously but because the spirit operates the physical realm the child begins to conform to certain habits that shocks you the mother and you see yourself in the life of your child. You see yourself. You see your child beginning to behave the way you used to behave. Because the sins that you committed in the past were not denied or denounced by the blood. So there is a legal hold. And your child is just beginning to become. Then. You would now find some other interest, interesting part where the child does not behave like the mother. Right? Right? but marry somebody that behaves like the mother <laughs> i'm sorry i just laughed because i know that some of you just got cold feet when i said that listen in the case where for example um the father was an abuser physically abusive he has a daughter the daughter is not physically abusive so you might think she's escaped the pattern right the blood has not been activated the family is still exposed. The curse is still there. But the child is not abusive. But then she marries a man. And the man before her had probably never hit somebody before in his life. Sometimes he's never hit somebody before. But because he is married into a family where there is an existing legal ground, his spirit and his body begins to conform to that habit without him knowing. Because in the place of the spirit, there is, there is a hold, a yoke that has been created and can only be denounced by the blood. I don't understand your question, Chris, um, Chrissy, Chris. What if he acts like the dad? What if who acts like the dad? Right? And then some other times you will find yourself as a woman uh, being, feeling, um, being attracted to a man who behaves like your dad and you find yourself and you're asking yourself why do I feel so why, why do I always attract men who always cheat on me why do I always attract men who are alcoholics why do I all the ones that used to be alcoholics but somewhere down the line he just has something to do with abuse of alcohol because although you did not conform to the existing curse of your family the, the, the spirit of that of that pattern attracts the other spirit of another pattern 
and establishes it and says, well, we have legal ground here because your father started this and he did not activate. We don't see the blood anywhere. So we cannot pass over. Right? We cannot pass over. So there are times, but my parents did not cheat. No, no, no. Like I said, sin is exponential, right? Sometimes you just, you date a guy and, um, I'm so sorry, you all, this hearing is annoying. Um, I'm not saying that it's always in the case where, like, you get married and your husband or your boyfriend cheats on you. It means that your parents cheated, right? No, like I said, sin is exponential. But also sometimes, um, nothing just really happens, right? If you date somebody, it can be that person's own family. It doesn't always have to be your family. You just had, you just um, probably did not have the good luck of marrying somebody who did not cheat. Sometimes it's in his family. It doesn't always have to be in your family, okay? So just because your parents and your grandparents did not cheat doesn't mean his own parents or his own grandparents, right? But because you dated him, which is why you have to know the spiritual um, background of the people you're dating or you're marrying because you don't even know what you're marrying into. You need to ask questions. You need to ask. You need to ask questions, right? So maybe in his own family, that's the pattern. And the thing is, although you have no pattern like that in your family, by virtue of the relationship, you have now introduced yourself into that concept. Sometimes it happens like that. I want to catch the other question. Um, what if he acts like the dad? What if my son acts like the dad? If it's a pattern, you can break it. You're his mother. My first husband abused me and cheated. My second husband cheated. Um, how about your parents? How about your grandparents? Now, like I said, it might not be that your grandfather cheated on your grandmother by virtue of sleeping with another woman. But... How about emotional cheating? Cheating is not just when sex is established. <sighs> That's why you can't even ask your parents these questions, right? You can't ask your, your dad, did you ever cheat on my mom emotionally? Because who's going to tell you that, right? But sometimes what if they did, they, they, they really did emotionally and they never repented of it. But it was a sin that was established, Okay. What questions would be appropriate to ask? What kind of questions should we ask? Oh, that's another topic. I don't want to deviate, but um, yeah, there. you don't ask this on the first day, by the way, of your life with, you must be aware of what you're marrying into and be able to assess, will I be able to handle this battle or not? Will I be able to take this or not? Okay. My mom's dad beat my gran. Well, there you go. You can always trace it back. Many times you can trace it either with your family or his family. But I want to quickly move on ahead, right? So, um, that's how the pattern is created. So, you either see that pattern existing in your own life or you see yourself dating people because deep calls on to deep. <laughs> patterns attract patterns. Spirit attracts spirit. Listen, listen. Before your mind connects to the mind of another man, your spirit must first connect. Your mind, your emotions is not the first thing that catches feelings. Your spirit catches, it, catch, it catches, listen. When you meet somebody and you think, oh, I just met, met this person and I fell genuinely in love with this person and this is where it all started. No, you are you are acting, you are, you are thinking from a place of ignorance. Nothing starts from the physical realm. It starts, always starts from the spiritual realm. So your spirit connected with the spirit of that person. So if there is an unbroken pattern in your family, it's connected with the pattern of that person. Yes, you can, Raisha. We're going to be breaking it tonight. It's, one of, it's the first prayer we're going to be doing. You can repent of the sins of our ancestors. Yes. Right? The unbroken patterns of your family connect with the pattern of his family. Now, sometimes or um, sometimes you see yourself, the first few years, everything is fine. But then he begins to conform. <laughs> he doesn't even know it. But he begins to behave like your father. Or your grandfather. And you ask yourself, why, 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 why are you changing? This is not who I met. This is not who I first started dating. No, the unbroken pattern is calling him forth. Out of who he was meant to be. Because there is a legal hold. 
So it's calling him forth to become something that he was not destined to be. Till you open your eyes and you realize something is wrong here. If I met this guy and he was a good guy, and I felt it in my heart that this guy was a good guy, and he's now suddenly changing, somebody, something more powerful than the natural realm is, is commanding him, because that thing has a legal ground, which is sin, to conform to a certain thing. And where I cry every time with wives is, many times as wives, we think that's the time to sign a divorce paper. Honey, even if that man walks out of your marriage, the next man unbroken, if it's not broken, the next man is going to confirm again. That's why you find yourself marrying the first time, the second time, the third time, and you think it's a change of man that would bring the joy. No, it's a change of pattern that will bring the joy. <laughs> the thing stops when you break the pattern, not when you change the relationship. So you can end that relationship today and marry the best man on the face of this earth. And in less than five years, he changes again. Because something more powerful than him is commanding him to conform to a certain pattern. So when Jacob... When Jacob gets to Laban and he says, I want Rachel, Laban says, okay, but gives him Leah. Many men would have said, you know what, I'm going to, get, I'm going to take what I got and I'm going to keep it moving. But the unforgiving sin of his father, Abraham, that skipped the son, Isaac, is still holding on the air. So Jacob spent seven years. 14 years, 21 years fighting for a woman although he was already married because there was a pattern over his head. So you see him literally saying, I love Rachel. I, I, she's the one my heart wants, wants. She's the one and all of that. And we think that was pure love. Honey, it was spirit calling onto spirit. It was, it was the, the, the unbroken hold in the family asking that polygamy has been established as a pattern in this family so what 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 even makes it worse is it did not even stop with rachel so rachel brings her maiden and gives it to him makes it the third woman leah brings her own maiden and gives it to him makes him the fourth woman and him a man of god by the way because this is a man who com who communed with angels he was a man of god so your husband can be tongue speaking, <laughs> praying 12 to 3 a.m. at night. <laughs> if it's not broken, it's not broken, right? He finds himself sleeping with the maids of his wives. You think Jacob did not have his own voice to say, what are you guys doing? Are you, are you guys kidding me? Are you just going to be sending women to my room back to back? Literally, are you serious? Do I look like a dog to you? He's not saying that. Instead, he's laying with them and birthing kids with them because the hold over his head says he must conform. And it gets worse and worse as he goes ahead. So somebody stands up and uses blood. Do you understand? Now, Jacob, maybe he was aware of the issues of Ishmael or not, but one thing was sure, he did not know how to break it. So he conformed. Right? Look at the sin of his mother by deceiving um, um, her, her husband Isaac. Rebecca deceived Isaac by bringing Jacob, um, um, by taking advantage of his blindness. By the way, that's a, that's a massive lesson right there. Um, her husband had one weakness, physical blindness. Instead of her to be the helper, by using her eyes to help him to see, she took advantage of his blindness by deceiving him and starting a pattern in her family because by doing that and leading Isaac, to blessing the wrong son <laughs> she opened another cave of war although there was an existing problem in the, in the family right she opened another one which was the, the, the pattern of deceit so what happens her son goes and he pays the repercussion by being deceived by his father-in-law first blow then his wife that he married Rachel deceives her own father 
And that was, that was a very terrible thing she did. Her father comes after them because one of his gods is missing. Richard's father. And he's asking and he says, after everything I did for you, you stole my gods. And Jacob says, I didn't steal any gods. Search my whole place. And any, whoever you find, like, if you find the gods, any of your gods here, he, de he makes a decree. So this is what should happen. And Rachel takes the god and she sits on top of the god. Deceit. It didn't start with her. Her mother-in-law started it. All right? I say all this to help you to understand that this is how, this is the seed and harvest. This is the principle of the kingdom. So that when we pray these prayers, you pray from a place of understanding. That patterns have been, some you even created yourself, by the way. Oh well, yeah. You, you think all those rebellious years or teenage years of being rebellious and really mean to your parents is not going to be repacked. It's not going to happen. <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, you could have said I was operating from a place of ignorance. Everyone who sins operates from a place of ignorance because when you receive greater knowledge, you will not commit the same sin again. It's because you've not understood. Light has not come into your heart about why that sin is bad, hence why you're still doing it. So everyone who does anything bad is operating from a place of ignorance, hence why ignorance is not an excuse for the consequences not to happen. So when you, you, you were young and you were wild and you thought you were living your best life and you were rebellious to your parents and all of those things, if the blood is not activated, your kids are not going to be going through terrible tools. They are repeating a pattern. So when you have uh, when <laughs> our generation children, have you guys noticed that the generation of uh, this current generation children are way more stubborn than, than we were? Have you guys noticed it? Do you have you have you realized that this generation children are like times ten of what we used to be? Now, it's not a coincidence. I hope you know. They are the harvest of the seeds that we sowed. And we did not activate the blood. So, when you see a one-year-old child open their mouth and become so rebellious, and you think to yourself, I wasn't this rebellious at this young age. You might not have been that young, but sin is exponential. Right? Sin is exponential. So, Although you started at the age of 13, your child will start at the age of one or two. And we say to ourselves, wow, this generation, they are so, you don't even listen. Mm -mm. It is the hold of rebellion that started with their parents. And we did not handle it with the blood. So the kids, and guess what? Their own children, whew, listen, <laughs> their kids, are going to be another times 10 because that's how sin compounds all right with that said i hope i've pumped you up enough to want to break this thing i'm ready to break i don't know about you but i'm ready to break so i'm going to need you to use your mouth open your mouth to pray i'm going to need you to be humble mostly with the first prayers we're going to be praying Please don't, don't ask for mercy saying to yourself, I did not commit the sin. It was my dad that committed it. So I don't even know why I'm asking for mercy. My father is no longer alive. And my father was a polygamist. He had just, he had too much time on his hands. Let's just put it that way. All right. But he's not suffering the repercussions of it anymore. He's dead. So, I need to now decide for myself that although I did not do what he did, but I still need to break what he started. And that's the mindset you must have. How many times should we pray and fast to break those causes, consequences, and patterns on both sides? Does the daily sin of the husband and wife bring those curses um, back? Okay, you don't have to... The blood of Jesus is powerful and potent. You don't need to break it one million times in 10 days. You do it once, it's done. You break the pattern once, it's done. It's done. It's, it's, the blood of Jesus is that powerful. It's not something you keep spilling. No, it's once activated, 
it becomes the notification in heaven. It's been activated. Satan, go get yourself another job. It's done. Right? But now, you now become conscious not to start new patterns. Right? Because it might now look like it wasn't broken. It was broken. You just started new patterns. Already feel broken. Crazy situation the last month. Please, everyone, keep me in prayers. We will see there. You can also join us even here that God will give you the strength. I'm just, um, I'm, I'm looking into the prayers as we pray. Um, okay, I want to find the prayers. Just give me a second. Libra ba Santa li kuba sha Libra sate a kundi ala brande kabri ba ba Santa Libro soto i kabo sata la bra sate libri se le kuba sha le kuba sha le kria ba Santa Libro soto e kaba Santa Librande Libro sata a kubri ba Santo Librande le kebe Santa la bra sa. La cobria basso tali brande, ke bria bashanta li kande le boso. All right, the first prayer is this is where you're going to be asking for mercy. Listen, the first prayer is mercy. You need Jesus is the mercy of the Father, He's literally our access code. I feel the presence of God so strong right now. I'm telling you, listen. <laughs> Jesus is literally our access code to the end of many of these things. All of these things, by the way. The blood of Jesus. Right? So I want you to spend the next one, one minute, two minutes, pleading for mercy. From the bottom of your heart, God have mercy. Upon me, upon my dad, my mom, my grandparents, whether they operated consciously or unconsciously, I bleed the blood of Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and verbally say it and be genuine about it. And even the sins that you have committed yourself. God, I plead for mercy. Blood of Jesus. I am sorry, God. I even apologize on behalf of my dad. I apologize on behalf of my grandparents. I don't want to suffer for their sins. I don't want to be punished for what they did. Have mercy, God. Purge us of all unrighteousness with your blood. In the name of Jesus, I humbly ask that you would have mercy upon us. Whether the sins that I committed or the sins that my parents committed. And I know that the devil is constantly trying to accuse the brethren. That's all he does. Right? But whatever he has against us, Father, I plead the blood of your son, Jesus. I plead the righteous, stainless, powerful blood of your son, Jesus. Right? I plead on my behalf and on behalf of all my loved ones. Right? I activate the substitutionary blood of Jesus over my life, over the life of my family. I activate the substitutionary blood of Jesus. The blood that substitutes um, his, 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 his mercy in exchange for the punishment. Father, we plead your blood, the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We plead over every ordinance of our parents, our grandparents. Have mercy. Have mercy, God. Have mercy. Have mercy. I can't watch my kids repeat the same patterns. I can't watch myself repeat the same patterns. I can't watch myself get married to somebody who just begins to conform to how my father used to be. I can't live this life like this anymore. Lord, have mercy. You said once shall a man die, but somebody has already died for me for my sins. So I don't have to die or be punished for the sins of my father or the sins of my grandfather. Have mercy, Lord. I understand that Jesus is the mercy code for me. So I ask that the name of Jesus will be activated for my sake. That the blood of Jesus will be activated for my sake. That the next time the enemy comes to the, to the meeting room and he tries to accuse me of the sins of my father. And tries to hold on to any legal ground. That you will rise up and you will raise the blood and say she's activated and she's done. She's, she's, she's freed from it because the blood has been activated. Oof. I wish some of you would, would activate the blood of Jesus over yourself right now. 
would activate the blood of Jesus over yourself right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. The next prayer is very important. Because just activating the blood is cute, it's nice, but you're going to have to step into the place of a king. We just, we just did the role of a priesthood. Now you've got to be a king. And this is what you're going to do. You now have to announce to the kingdom of darkness that there's been a change of authority. Because they don't know. So they're going to keep trying. They want to keep testing. To see if you're going to fall. To see if it's still possible to assess you. So you want to re-announce and let it be known. And let it be known that power has changed hands. Authority has shifted. <laughs> Authority has shifted. Power has moved and has been given to a more supreme, superior power. Right? So I want you to open your mouth and I'm going to read something out and you're going to repeat after me. I want, you, I want you to say it from the bottom of your heart. I would be screaming right now if I could, but I think somebody's reading on the other side of the room and I'm in the lounge area of the apartment, okay? So, I'm, I'm not probably, I'm not going to be able to scream, but I need you to be able to scream. La criba shanta la boso. I want you to say, I stand in authority, dominion, and power. I stand in authority, dominion, and power. You need to say those words. Those words are very important because you're not. If you come standing by yourself, who is covering you? The, he said, Peter, I know. Uh, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? Who are you? I, I I don't see your name. When I search through the spiritual realm, I don't see your name, right? I don't see anything backing you up. So who are you? In whose authority do you come, right? So you stand in authority, dominion, and power. And I speak to every demonic force that is fighting against my destiny. I speak to every demonic force that is fighting against my destiny. <laughs> and this is what you're saying, right? Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. God has shown me mercy. God has shown me mercy. Using the power of his blood. So I decree and I declare. That I am free from every demonic stronghold. That I am free from every demonic pattern. I denounce the works of darkness. I denounce the works of... Listen, there is somebody in this call right now. Listen. There is a strong hold of the enemy over your family. Strong, massive hold of your family. Listen, there is, it is not a coincidence that you specifically are on this call. I want you to say that thing again so strong. I denounce every works of darkness. I have obtained mercy. I have obtained mercy. Put your name, your full name in there. I have obtained mercy. So I blot myself out. I blot, I take out, I blot myself out from every handwriting. From every ordinance that speaks against me in the name of Jesus. I Listen. Oh. Alright, let's keep going. <laughs> oh, I feel God's presence so strong right now. Like, I see angels ready to cut off chains to break off chains in the name of Jesus the third prayer in the name of Jesus 
I decree that today, the 11th of March, 2020, is my day. Uh-huh. It's my day. It's my day. I declare that everything that Jesus Christ did for me must be appropriated in my life today. I declare that everything that Jesus Christ did for me must be appropriated in my life. Must be everything. Must be appropriated in my life today. Therefore, I declare that every spell, every yoke, every curse, Every altar, every ordinance, every stronghold, every pattern that is speaking against me and my loved ones. I command you to leave now. Be gone! In the name of Jesus. Be gone! In the name of Jesus. Be gone! Be done with! This is it! Jesus said towards the end of his life, Powerful three words. It is finished. That's all he said. It is finished. He wasn't just talking about the people who were there. For me to. For you to. It is finished. It's a done deal. It's established. <laughs> the curtain has been turned apart. The curses have been broken. He had, he's, he's gone to hell he's snatched away the keys. He's taken authority away from the enemy. And he's given us victory in his name. It is done. In the name of Jesus. Now the fourth prayer. In the name of Jesus. I declare. That any sin. That is associated with my lineage. Calabas and calaboso. Any sin that is associated with my lineage, every mistake in the past, I now plead the blood of Jesus over it in the name of Jesus. I now plead the blood of Jesus over it in the name of Jesus. Every mistake, every sin, Every offense, anything that the enemy had had as a hold against me in the past. <laughs> Listen. I declare that any sin that is associated with my lineage, every mistake of the past, I now plead the powerful blood of Jesus. In the name of I plead the blood of Jesus over it. Whether the sins that I knew about, the ones I did not know about, the ones my parents did, the ones their parents did, I don't care who started it, but I know who's going to end it though, and it's going to be me. Because I stand in Christ Jesus, in authority, dominion, and power, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every sin, every offense, every mistake, conscious or unconscious. I plead the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The fifth prayer. In the name of Jesus, every spirit behind the tragedies, behind the failures, behind the delays, behind the retrogression, behind the closed doors, hear the word of the Lord today. Your legal hold is broken. In the name of Jesus, today, your legal hold is broken. Hear the word of the Lord. Today, your legal hold is broken. My Lord rebukes you. My Lord Christ Jesus rebukes you. My Lord Christ Jesus rebukes you. You spirits that is behind the tragedies in my family, the consistent patterns of single motherhood, the consistent patterns of divorce, the consistent patterns of alcohol, the consistent patterns of rape, the consistent patterns of abuse, the consistent patterns of anger, the consistent patterns of anything that does not reflect the person of Christ. My Lord rebukes you. In the name of Jesus. Calabasa. 
Amen. Now the sixth one. In the name of Jesus, I stand on behalf of myself and my family that everything that the devil has taken away from us must be restored back to us today. I'm taking it back. I'm taking my joy back. I'm taking my marriage back. I'm taking my children back. I'm taking our health back. I'm taking my virtue back. I'm taking my self-esteem back. I'm taking our finances back. Our properties, I'm taking it back. Hey, Kaba Santala Brisha. I believe in Jesus, I'm taking it back. I glory, I'm taking it back. The favor of the Lord, I take it back. Everything that the enemy took away from us. Everything that he took away from us. I take it back. I don't take it back tomorrow. I take it back today. Now. In the name of Jesus. I take it back. In the name of Jesus. I take it back. Now in the name of Jesus. I take it back. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Kriaba Santa Labroso. E Kroba Santa Labrasa Lebresa. Ah, Kiba Labro Santa. So I'm going to read out a prayer. But before that, I want you to lay your hands on your head. Kalibasa. Before you lay your hands on your head, please hold on. Stretch your hands towards me. Something is going to happen right here. I feel it so strongly. And I want you to, I want you to be, to pay attention, okay? I want you to stretch your hands towards me. I'm going to pray certain prayers. And I'm going to tell you to put those hands on your head. Some of you are going to be knocked out. It's okay. <laughs> Some of you are going to shake. Some of you are going to scream. So maybe nothing is really going to happen physically, but something is going to happen spiritually. But I want you to pay attention, okay? Stretch your hands towards me, right here to your screen. Hang your phone somewhere and stretch your hands towards me. There is no, there is no distance in the spirit. It's only in the physical realm that we have time and distance as a, as a barrier. Right. But in the spirit realm, there is no distance. All right. I decree and I declare and I stand. I was anointed for this. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Yeah, and that's the word God gave to me when I was going to start ministry. Mm -hmm. And I've been anointed for this. So I come not in my own power, I come not in my own name, for in my name I am nothing. But when I come, <laughs> empowered by the person of Christ, I'm a double-edged sword. I am, I am, I am in, in, untouchable. <laughs> I'm untouchable and I'm empowered to operate in a realm that is way beyond the physical realm. So I speak right now in authority, dominion, and power to every woman listening to me right now, the ones who are going to listen after this. Uh, hear the word of the Lord uh, that the ancestry curse in your family is broken this minute in the name of Jesus. Uh, right now, I declare by the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, that every demonic altar that was raised in your family, that was exalted in your family in the past, the fire of the Holy Ghost quenches it down. Only one altar is risen up right now in the family and that's where God is exalted. Every other thing that is contrary to that is broken down right now. In the name of Jesus, every pattern, every curse, every delay, every stronghold, every yoke that has existed in the past, I don't care for whatever reason that existed, is therefore broken in the name of Jesus. It is scattered, it is denounced. In the name of Jesus, everything that was lost, everything that you lost, by virtue of the curses and the patterns and the strongholds, you are restored right now in the name of Jesus. That the spirit of the lay that sits upon people's destinies, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command those devils right now, those spirits that are stood behind and against everything that has happened in your life, that has made you go from relationship to relationship without leading it to marriage, that has made you go from marriage to marriage, running out of of your marriage over several things uh, that has made your spouses begin to conform to a certain person that they were not when you first married them whatever that spirit is hear the word of the lord uh, i'm not coming in my name you don't you don't need to even know who my name is but you need to know who i serve though because the lord that i serve you are also obligated to submit under him and i declare right now that you will lose your hold over those families over those people you will lose your hold you will back 
stuff in the name of Jesus. You will get your hands off their properties, get your hands off their mental health, get your hands off their marriages, get your hands off their relationship, get your hands off their finances, get your hands off their health. Now in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that freedom has come. So right now, the power of the Holy Ghost and sis ladies will put those hands on their head. The Bible says you are our glory and the lifter of our head. Kalabasa. That the heads of women that have been bent like this, I see people's heads like this bent due to the situations that the enemy introduced into their lives. Uh, that you will lift those heads up as they put their hand up on their head. That you will lift up their head and allow their glories to shine again. The ones whose faces have been covered with veils. Uh, the ones whose faces have been given another face. <laughs> Some of you Ugh, the enemy wore you another face. So when people see you, you're pretty, they don't see what you think you see in the mirror. That as they put that hand on their head, whatever has been taken away from them or exchanged for something negative is taken back. In the name of Jesus, uh, that the glory of the Lord will be seen on the heads of this women from now henceforth. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that the glory of the Lord will be seen on this woman right now. Oh, Kala Branda La Bosa, Spirit of the Living God, the one that hovered around the earth, even before the creation of the earth. I speak that you will go from home to home. You know where these women are. Where these women are. I don't know where they are, but you do. And as they put their hands on their head, let there be a shift. Right now, ladies, in the put your hands and you put it on your head and let it be there. Kala Braha Santa Librasho. Shackles are breaking. Let the oil of God flow. Flow upon those heads right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now. Oh, ha, I see somebody, you're in a dark room. It's like you don't have the light on, but you're in your room. And as you put your hands on your head, it's like the oil of freedom has been put upon your head. For what testimony do we have if we identify ourselves with Christ himself, yet our lives do not reflect the testimonies of Jesus? What testimonies do we have? Our lives must be different from the lives of unbelievers if we declare that we are children of God. So I declare right now that all the powers that have stopped you from reflecting the testimony of Christ is therefore put to an end in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's somebody here, your mom, your mom is going to start acting up. Oh wow, this is sensitive. Your mom is going to start acting up. Because I need you to know that sometimes our parents were the ones who dived into certain things. Oh, blood of Jesus. Kabasa. Listen, our parents died into certain things. So when, when a child breaks away from the hold that they created, they get the message because the memory is sent around. Um, I'm not saying you should go pray that your mom should quench or all those kind of things. But listen, you are going to, you are going to have to detach yourself emotionally from your mother <laughs> and um, um, <laughs> I'm trying to be conscious about saying I know that there are people in this place who do not believe in these kind of things but um, I'm not here to serve people I would say how the Lord the Spirit is asking me to say uh, uh, some of you, your mom is going to be acting up really bad because all of a sudden you lose, she's losing grip She's losing control, but you are going to put her in her place. Um, you're not going to curse her out, no. You're going to honor her, 
But in the place of prayer, you're going to detach the authority of her over your life. Do you know that you can operate in a way where you say, I know no man after the flesh. So, whether she was the biological mother that had me, it doesn't mean that she has control over my life. I take back, I take back, I take you back, I take you back, I take you back. So, some of you are literally, you're going to be sworn enemies with your birth mother. It's specifically one person actually. But you're gonna detach yourself because she's gonna to want to take you down with her but you're gonna choose no she's going down on her own if she doesn't repent she's going down on her own your mom that's what I heard another person your friend by virtue of affiliation you've done certain things with that friend of yours cabra sante ke briba basha le cosa E kriba santali brandele bro kabasa e candele bro shatala brisa. A friend of yours by virtue of association. Whoever drops in your listen, you're gonna have dreams. Write them down. You're gonna see faces. You're gonna see people are gonna begin to reveal themselves to you because this is what happens. You want to know the real character of a person, piss them off. Piss them off. Right? So you've just pissed certain people off and they're going to be revealing their character. You're going to detach yourself from those specific friends and in the place of prayer, you're going to recover all that he took away from you by virtue of association. Let's not be emotional. This year is a dark year. Listen, don't be emotional about certain decisions that you make. Take it back. Detach yourself. Even if that's the only friend you've got. All right? Um... There's somebody, your hands are heavy. Um, your, it's like your arms, right now, as I'm talking to you right now, your arms are heavy. It's like I just felt my arms really heavy. I want you to lean one of those hands on your head the other one on your womb i want you to say these words um i recover all that has been taken away from me i recover all that has been taken away from me everything everything i recover it all i recover it all i recover it all i recover it all hakabasa e kriaba shanta le kobasa is um there's a lady it's like a, a a big nylon was put upon your face oh <laughs> uh, like a big nylon was put upon your face you know when you watch movies where they kidnap people and they kind of just put a bag on the person's face uh they put that um they put that on your on your head so you're walking around but people who are meant to favor you are not seeing your head so I want you to tear it off I tear off everything everything that has been put over my face I tear it off ah In the name of Jesus. Every woman here, please put your hand on your womb. On your tummy. On your womb. Oh. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to burn from within. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to burn from within. Some of you are going to feel a tingling in your private area. Word. Yeah. But I have to say, you're going to feel it tingling in your, things are going to purge out of you. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to purge. Yeah, begin to purge everything that is not of God, that you've taken in by virtue of oral, 
or association. Let the Holy Ghost begin to purge you of it. Let the fire of God begin to burn those things out of existence in the name of Jesus. The attack of the marine world against a certain family here. You always see yourself either in the water or you see, you just see things that have to do with water or that's literally all that you, um, um, the kind of things you see manifesting in your dream. I detach you right now. I want you to say, I detach myself from the marine world. I detach myself from the marine world. I belong to Christ. I'm a new creation. All things are passed away and all things have become new. Oh, Holy Ghost, I cover everyone here in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, 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 the blood of Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. If you love water and you love the beach, that's not, that's not, that's, that's probably not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ones who, the person I was even talking about, she knows, she knows. Once I said it, she knows. Um, once I said it, she knows. You have dreams, you see yourself in the water. You know you have no business being there. Mm -hmm. She knows. Um, yeah. Tomorrow we're going to be praying when it comes to spirit, husband, soul ties. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. I'm so sorry we spent longer than usual. I actually wanted to finish at 7, but um, the Holy Spirit moves. I see a question, how do I do this when my mother has health problems? Um, um, you can be there for her to, as, to the extent to which you can control the conversations. You can be there for her, pray for her, ask her to repent because at the end of the day, that's the beginning of the restoration. She has to repent. She has to give her life to Christ. But if she refuses to repent, you might have to make a decision. Choose your future above your past. Um, yes, I did. My ex, he cannot make up his mind. I really do not understand. D Dina, do you want to send, um, um, tell me what you mean? Um, some of one, somebody has a hip problem, a hip pain. Part, not part of the prayer, but you have hip pain, pains in your right side of your of your hip. I pray healing and restoration in the name of Jesus. Complete healing and restoration in the side of your hip in the name of Jesus. Kaba Santa. And some of you, um, as I was praying, there was like a feeling, like a heat right here. You want to be here tomorrow. Oof, I feel it so strong, like a knot here on the chest. I felt that tingle in my chest. In the name of Jesus. Come on now, Liz. Come on. Okay. There is somebody on the right. On the right. Hey. So tomorrow we're going to be praying. Soul ties. Um... Spiritual husbands, covered, covered glory. Ah, ikabasa. Some of you are going to have dreams where you're going to see yourself vomiting. Um, I am cutting soul ties from an abusive and narciss narcissistic ex. Lord, heal me. Ready for the man you have for me. Help me to forgive. I pray for the grace to forgive him because that is the beginning of your restoration. To whom much is given, much is expected. You've been forgiven, you will forgive him. Um, we were old friends. I reunited a couple of months ago. We started dating. Then after, he cheated on me three times. Three times. Um, three times. Edda, I pray over your eyes. Um... That your eyes will open even in the place of prayer. I don't know what that means to you right now. Because it really, yeah. Just felt to say that. Need help to get over my ex. Um, we're going to talk about that tomorrow or Friday. I promise. Um, we'll talk about that. I am itching head and back. Oh, Kaba, I speak the peace. Over the body of Ruth, in the name of Jesus. 
whatever it is that is reacting to those prayers, in the name of Jesus, the peace of God that passes all understanding over her in the name of Jesus. The peace of God that passes all understanding over her body right now in the name of Jesus. Ekaba Santala Bosha. Anoint your hand. Um, who, who said that? Ruth. Anoint your hand and rub it over your head and your back. I, I'm hoping the anointing all was there when you were praying all the prayers. Over your, your head and your back. And um, there are stuff dusting off your head. Oh, there is a work of deliverance happening in your life, Ruth. Listen, there is. Um, God has not forgotten about you, Sylvia. He hasn't. But he wants you closer, though. He wants you closer. He wants you closer without a request. Can you do that? Get closer to him without a request. There is something that is clouding my boyfriend's mind. He says, I want to destroy him. Whatever I say to him, he takes it a wrong way. We will deal with that tomorrow. Did anyone else get very emotional during the prayers? That is evidence of the power of the presence of God. The presence of God comes in different ways. It slays you. Sometimes you fall. Um, sometimes you jump. Sometimes you cry. It's evident. Okay. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you. Wow, that was powerful. Thank you, ladies, for joining in. That was my, that's my daughter. My husband and my daughter just walked in. I thank you, ladies. I'm going to see you all tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right? Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Come ready. Keep your fasting going. And um, 